What's up, everybody? How you doing? This is your coach, friends, and I want to thank you for taking this time to join me. If you're not a member, please become a member so that you can be a part of our full moon chats, like the ones that we're getting ready to have. So listen, guys, here's the thing. <clears throat> On this video, I want to talk about the true understanding of the alchemical mindset by utilizing the fact that we have turned our society into a male, patriarchal, misogynistic society in a world where we're half of the population or more, a little bit more than half of the population actually, are women, but yet women continue to follow these religions that subjugate you, that tells you that you are the worst of the worst. Yet you live in societies where you believe in equal rights for a woman. You believe in women's liberation. A woman should have the right to vote. A woman should have the right to run for office. Kamala Harris is now the most powerful woman in America as the vice president and one of the most powerful people in the world. But she's a woman and we say that women should have equal rights. But every week you are participating in a confined religious prison that tells you that you're not valued. And whether you see it on the surface or not, whether you have looked at the doctrine and the doctrine has changed the way the thinking is, but the words are still there. And if you're saying that you're Bhagavad Gita, you're saying that the um, Upanishads, the Bible, the Quran, the Christian Bible, that the Quran, the Torah, you're saying that all these books are the word of God, but yet you are just skipping over all the parts that says that you are not valued. And you wonder why your struggle is so hard. Why do you struggle so hard? Why has man made life more difficult for you? And one of the reasons is because you're fighting a conflict. You're, you're, you're a house divided. Socially, economically, politically, in all other areas. You think In all those areas, you believe you are equal. But religiously and sexually, you do not. You are still ashamed. Women are in the Quran are still based on the Quran are still having their their um, clitoris clipped off. They're still being subjugated to um, arranged marriages in India and, and in Arabia. You're still through those religions. You're still being put in caste systems through the, the religions of Christianity. There are there are, there are just vile things concerning women. For instance, I always have this conversation. And most, if not, no, I don't want to use the finite term to say none, but most women will not recognize that in the Christian Bible, and I want you to go find this, in the Old Testament, it says that if a woman, a young girl is not betrothed to a man and she is found raped and she is and her rape, her and her rapists, they catch him. Then all he has to do is pay her, pay the father 50 pieces of silver and then her, she would have to marry her rapist and produce children for them. That sounds horrible. Let me ask you a question. Before you say that you try to justify it, would you allow that? At what time frame in any part of the earth in history would you have said, that's okay? If you lived during that time frame, would you really have thought that that was okay? That that's the word of God? Do you even think that now? Do you have a daughter? If you have a daughter, would you allow your daughter, would you force your daughter, not allow, would you force your daughter to marry her rapist? Would you? Would you do that? I don't think you would. Simply because he paid you 50 pieces of silver. You wouldn't allow that. So why is it okay back then? Of course it's not. But you're holding on to what you've been taught that this is the word of God. And even though our society is not that way today, you allow your mind to excuse it. And say, well, back then it was okay. Why? Then what kind of loving God was it that said it was okay for your daughter who was raped by a man to have to then marry that man and continue to lay with that man and produce children simply because the society back then valued women only based on their ability to keep their chastity and produce children. That a woman's value was simply that. Not in her mind, not in her heart, not her spirit. Her value was zilch, zero, nothing, but more, nothing more than property. She was just a little bit above a, a goat. A little bit above a slave is all the value that a woman was as a matter of fact a male slave had more value than a uh, than your daughter than a daughter did unless that daughter was able to attract a rich man how far away are we from that in today's society not very far in your new testaments 
You recognize that it tells the women, keep your women silent in the churches for if they have any questions to ask their husbands at home. Now, the rationale of that is that the women, that there was arguments and fussing going on in this particular church, and Paul wrote this letter to quell that arguing. But how many men were arguing? How many men were causing a ruckus? Did he call the men out, or did he just call out the women? Did he just tell the women to be silent? Why didn't he tell everyone to be silent and listen to their leadership, follow their heart within God? Where, where was this? mindset to look at the whole scope of thing and not just the one the, the one gender the one gender have you ever noticed that every man in the old and new testament and in the quran that no one has everybody has a i am simon of whatever city or i am joseph ben mathia i am you know paul son of that they all have a titled name but no woman save one has a titled name not 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 even mary the the the, the mother of jesus of Yeshua has a name. She's just Mary. When they come to see Jesus at the uh, when the rock stone has had been moved, it was Mary and some other Marys and some other women. But Mary Magdalene is the only one that has a title. But even in her title of Magdalene, she was she was confused to be the prostitute. So they had to crush her just a little bit more, not making sure that she didn't have any prominence. But no woman had any attribute. You would think Martha would have had a little bit of something since she had the money to f help finance the ministry of Yeshua and take care of the apostles in their travels. But no, she didn't have a last name. Martha didn't have a last name. No other woman has a title or well, no one had a last name, but no other woman has a title daughter of, of this city because men had to be distinguished based on they are of this city. We had to be able to tell the difference between Joseph of Bethlehem and Joseph of Nazareth. We have to be able to tell the difference between Joseph, son of Bartholomew, and Joseph, son of Simon. Men had to be distinguished, whereas women were just cannon fodder. You be whatever you need to be. You be whatever. It doesn't matter. You're just a woman. You're just a woman. And let's 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 look at it even a little deeper. Every time something jacked up happens, a woman is blamed. A woman is blamed. Lot, of all the despicable people, Lot, supposedly was the one good dude in this Sodom and Gomorrah, in Sodom. He was the one good dude. Now, if you really look at the story of Lot, Lot kind of tried to cheat Abraham out of the, the sheep. He tried to cheat him out of the sheep. He tried to cheat, cheat him out of the good pasture. And then, so Lot is this one good dude that God is supposedly saving from Sodom. But Lot offers his daughters to be raped and pillaged. But then the, 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 the hoarding mob says, nope, we want to bang them angels. So they leave. Lot's wife looks back. She turns to a pillar of salt. Lot's daughters get him drunk and two nights in a row and have sex with him so that they can have children. Now, you would think, is this a society where Lot and his daughters are up in the mountains? Did the entire world get destroyed? Why did all of a sudden they think that they only could produce, they had to produce children with their father? This incest, the worst, nastiest kind of incest, had to happen. Now, if they got him drunk and him getting drunk, I mean, was he just sitting there not knowing how much to drink? I mean, where's his culpability? If it happened the first night, I might let it slide just a tense of it. They got him, he was just sitting there sad, his wife gone, he's... he's He's remorseful. He's like, oh my God, I lost my wife. I lost my whole city. You know, when I was with Abraham, we had it good. But then I left Abraham and, and then I got captured by the damn, by the people. And then Abraham saved me. And then, you know, I had, we was, we was chilling. And then I found two dudes to marry my daughter. But then, you know, I had to offer my daughter to be raped. And I'm feeling so bad about that already. And then we got out. But then my wife turned into a pillar of salt. Now I ain't got no woman. And all, you know, so he drinking. I, I get the first night you drinking. And then your daughter seduce you. But when you wake up to realize that your daughter has seduced you, how do you let it happen a second time? Where is Lot's culpability in this whole story? There isn't any. When Abraham is told that through Sarah, he, she, he will have a child. and and But Sarah's like, no, nah, you're going to have sex with my Egyptian slave because I'm too old. And then they have Ishmael. Where is 
Abraham's culpability? Did, did Sarah like snatch him by the penis and drag him in there? Where, where, where's his culpability? But these are the heroes here. But women are blamed. Who gets blamed? Sarah. Sarah gets blamed. When God comes and speaks to them, Sarah is the one who's blamed. When Adam and Eve are in the garden, according to the story, and Eve eat from the tree, the woman is blamed and she, oh, she's going to have painful childbirth and it's her fault and uh, evil came into the world because of the woman and the woman and the woman. Where was Adam? Why didn't Adam say, look, you ate from the tree of life. We got to go and talk to God about this. I'm not eating it because I'm going to follow the rules. But was, was, was Eve Punani so damn good? That he was like, oh, God, Punani, God, Punani, God. She ain't going to give me none of that Punani unless I eat from these trees. Let me get some of that Punani. Let me get some of that eating. I mean, what, what? But we just blame Eve. Eve gets all the blame. Where's Adam's culpability here? Oh, he got to work. But then he's working. But who's still dominant? Who's still the dominant one? It's a male egotistical society that we are living in simply because we allow our religions to force us to do that. Yes, men may be stronger upper body, body-wise, physically, but that doesn't mean that we are better. It doesn't, not even slightly. But yet, we allow that to be the benchmark. We allow religion to tell us that a woman is, is, is not worthy. And if you look, you may not think, oh, well, that doesn't affect me. I don't think that way. And I know I'm worthy. I'm a strong woman and blah, 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 blah. But psychologically, back in the back of your mind, those things inhibit you. Those things are keeping you from actually achieving your greatest form simply because you've been told or you've read these stories. And whether you recognize it or not, a woman is going to identify with a woman just as a man is going to identify as a man. Just as a white person identifies with another white person historically and a black person identifies with a black, another black person historically. This is why the Chinese identify with the Chinese dynasties historically and so on and so forth. This is just how humanity works. You identify with your similarities and whether you realize it or not, you will do it on a subconscious level and that will affect your entire life unless you decide to make changes. Recognize that these stories were written by men in order to control society and control the woman. Men are told to go out and sow your oats while women are told to keep their chast. If a man goes and bangs 50 women, then he's a hero. If a girl, if a woman goes and she bangs 50 dudes, she's a slut, she's a whore. Women are taught to keep their sensuality and their sexuality in check because only the man can go out there and do that. But the woman can't. She's denigrated if she does. But a woman actually is more sensual than a man. A man only has about 4,000 nerve endings in the penile area, whereas a woman has about 80,000 nerve endings in her vaginal area. A man's nipples only is sensitive to like the first degree, where a woman's nipples are sensitive to like the 15th times degree. Women feel more sensual pleasure than men, yet women are told to keep their sensuality in check and check with the man, beneath the man. Let the man get his pleasure, whereas a woman should be able to, but a woman should be able to get her pleasure. But most of this stems from these teachings, these teachings. That we, people say when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. That has nothing to do with the woman, actually. That actually has more to do with the fact that when men don't have women, men are like wild ass animals. Men will fight wars if we don't have women. Men will go out and act and do stupid, I don't care about my life, daredevilish, testosterone things if we don't have women. Trust me, if I didn't have a woman, if I didn't have my kids, then I would, my level of personal responsibility would be incredibly low. I wouldn't even be making these videos if I didn't have kids. If I didn't have something that I was responsible for, I wouldn't even be making these videos. Most of these videos are because I want to have, this is wisdom to pass down to my children if anything ever happens to me that lives forever. But if you think about it, you give men when they don't have women, we fight, we, we argue, we, we, we jump off stuff, we do all kind of foolishness. So it is good for a man to have a wife because then he settle his ass down. He settles down. That's the actual factual 
of that. But if you scour through, and I'm sure in the comments you guys are gonna, you can pick out even more stories about how women are just treated so horribly in these books. I mean, Muhammad marries this 14 year old little girl. Mary is a 14 year old girl. Uh, Mira is a 14 year old little girl. All these girls are like 14 and, and, and they're just used by these grown ass men, these pedophiles. You know, or gods that are pedophilias who are having sex and birthing children from these little girls because we are telling the women that that's your value. And you wonder why women get on TikTok and all these other things and they're shaking their ass all the time. It's because we've told them that's their value. Your value is in your shake, your value is in your ability to birth. Your value is in your ability to let me have sex with you. That's your value. And although we may be growing in our consciousness to recognize that a woman can do anything that a man can do, we still will preach to them these stories when it's from the time that they're the children that makes them think that they are less than and then women have to overcome that as they become older. But why put it in their minds in the first place? You can't teach morality. You can't teach a loving relationship with a creator without telling them these stories of how, oh, look at what Lot's going through. I mean, not Lot. Look at what Job's going through. Look at what Job's going through. And his wife he killed all his kids, left his wife, and she's like, you should just curse guys. You should just blah, blah, blah. You, she's just negative. Oh, we're going we gonna to keep her around so we can have the dissenting voice coming from his wife, Right? Why didn't he just kill her too? So that the story really was about the bet between the Satan and Job. I mean, Satan and God, which I don't know how. That's the whole thing. If you go back to my Inky, uh, how Inky is, is Satan, Yahweh, El, and Allah, you'll understand that one better. But um, why? 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 Why did it keep the woman around? Just so you can kick another woman. That's, that's all. Just so a woman can be kicked down again. And women are constantly kicked down in these religions. And we have to recognize this and let them be free. Even in, in, in Ifa, in Ifa, Oshun, Oshun, nurturing, the nurturing waters of Oshun, the, 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 the beautiful creative powers of Oshun. When the other male deities were having problems creating man, they had to go to Oshun. And Odomare is like, if you want to do it right, you got to do it with Oshun. And when they came to her, Oshun was like, nah, I don't have nothing to do with y'all because y'all treated me foul. So then she, they was like, she was like, well, I'll make, you a, I'll make you a deal. I'm pregnant now. And if the child is a girl, we done with y'all. But if the child is a boy, I'll help you make man. So what do they do? Even in that story, the other gods, deities, Orishas, manipulate the, they find out that the baby inside of Oshun is a girl. They manipulate the baby and make it into a boy, which winds up being Eshu. So they still got women being treated foul, even at the power level of Oshun. So we got to let this stuff go, guys. We got to grow up. We got to come to a consciousness recognizing that the Kundalini energy is the, is the combination of balance between the masculine and the feminine. We cannot let Anu defeat Titi. We can't do that. That Tiamata needs, I meant Tiamata, not Titi. We got to recognize that and raise our Kundalini energy. This is the caduceus of both serpents coming in, meeting at the pineal gland so that we have vision and understanding. I hope this reached you guys. Recognize I'm not trying to steal your religion, but you need to modify your viewpoint on it so that you can truly grow into your Christ consciousness, Buddha mind, crazed Kundalini, uh, energetic being, whatever you want to call it. But like I said, it's the full alchemist. Getting rid of all the the, the, the additives, the, the negatives, all the superfluidities, all those things, and coming out as pure as you possibly can. And it's a constant recycling of mental thought and mental energy, followed up by your actions, by your actions. Got another video coming out real soon. It's going to be really good. Going to talk about two Buddhist stories about forgiveness and not letting people affect you. So y'all have a great day. Remember, you got to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey. Good vibration.